Hello, this is Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management. We have a great show for you this morning. Of course, if you have questions about your portfolio, you're concerned about the advice you're receiving, you can always send us an email question to brianresney at resneywealth.com. Also visit our website, resneywealth.com. You can send us questions via our website. You can also schedule a consultation to meet me in person or talk with my firm. Again, go to resneywealth.com. You know, I wanna talk about the general state of the economy, of course, the investment markets. We're into the second quarter, of course, of 2015. And generally speaking, if you are positioned correctly, you're probably making a decent return year to date. I hope you've been listening to my show and take my advice about reducing bond exposure. Too many investors have an over concentration to either bond mutual funds or individual bonds. Whether those are muni bonds, treasury bonds, corporate bonds, interest rates are at rock bottom prices. If interest rates go up, bond values will go down. We've seen a lot of hurt coming across investors' portfolio that didn't listen to my advice. It is now the time to reduce bond duration or exposure and reduce the uh, percentage of money that you ultimately have in bonds. I firmly believe the U.S. economy is on good, stable footing. We're seeing a great job market. We're seeing GDP growth, nothing exciting, but about that two to two and a half percent range for 2015. We've got population growth. We've got earnings growth. Ultimately, if you're positioned correctly and you're not listening to your Wall Street salesman, you have a great chance to make a return on your retirement portfolio and get away from Wall Street's conflicts of interest and bad investment advice. Today's topic, four critical current market conditions that will send your portfolio down the drain. Let's talk about number one. And this is ultimately important, over concentration only to large US cap companies. Let me explain. When I review client portfolios, or I should say potential clients that are looking at higher Resney Wealth Management, the vast majority of investors that have come in and talked to one of our offices, or if you look at statistical numbers across the United States, most investors, if they invest in the stock market, have most of their money in large cap US stocks. Typically, 90 to 95% of their money is in large cap stocks. Not that you should not have some money in certain large cap stocks, but there's better opportunities often in small and mid cap. And of course, let's talk about emerging markets or other countries around the world. Bottom line, don't just invest in US large cap stocks because if the dollar keeps going up, it will hurt returns of large cap companies that export. Remember, when our dollar is stronger, it's more expensive for people to buy our products overseas, meaning U.S. stock profits, especially large cap, tend to lag the market. So if you're just buying companies like GE or ExxonMobil, you're making a huge mistake. Over concentration in bonds and bond mutual funds. I made a comment about this earlier in my show. Bond and bond mutual funds, short duration. Bonds act like a teeter-totter. Rates go up, bond values go down. Bottom line, rates are around two and a quarter on the 10-year. We've already seen them come up from about 185 to two and a quarter. That's roughly a five to 6% loss in long-term bonds. If you own too much money in bonds, not only are you gonna make a horrendously bad return on the dividend, but you could lose a lot of principal as rates keep moving up. I do not expect rates to skyrocket. I expect a quarter to a half a percent interest rate increase if the economy keeps doing well over the next three to five years. That means you investors who have too much money in bonds, more in my opinion than 30%, are gonna be hurt substantially. How do you protect yourself? Look at total return. Reduce your bond percentage exposure down to around 30%. Look at short-term duration, under three-year maturity. Look at floating rate security bonds. Again, short-term duration. If you have too much in bonds, you're going to get hurt when rates move up. Overvalued assets. Traded REITs, 
utility stocks, closed end mutual funds, high yield bonds. Those are four uh, sectors or investment types that are on my hit list. These are the most overvalued. So when people say to me, Brian, do you think the stock market's overvalued? Not the whole stock market. But if you look at publicly traded REITs or utilities, when interest rates move up, these often do very poor. In fact, a lot of REITs and utility stocks are negative year to date, even though a lot of the market is up quite a bit. Bottom line, don't think utilities are safe. Don't think uh, publicly traded real estate is safe. Don't think closed end mutual funds are safe and don't think high yield bonds are safe. In fact, I'm seeing large percentages of portfolios that call my TV or radio show repeatedly have big percentages in high yield bond or bond mutual funds because they're looking for this potentially higher yield. High yield bonds are the most expensive overvalued asset of all bonds in my opinion. The highest valuation I've seen in my 28 years in the investment business. So look at your portfolio. If your broker or so-called advisor who's really a Wall Street salesperson is telling you, hang on to those expensive bonds. And if you're looking at your monthly statement, you're gonna say, Brian has been spot on. My portfolio is going down because interest rates this year are going up. I'm losing money. It's time to make an adjustment. No 10% correction in over three years. Not enough liquidity in your portfolio to absorb a correction if you need immediate income. Let me explain. No matter what you're investing in, stocks, bonds, real estate, oil, gold, everything has these up and downs as potentially they can go to new highs. We haven't, generally speaking, seen a 10% correction in the equity markets in over three years. I'm expecting one this year. It may not happen, but you need to be positioned. It doesn't mean that the markets will end negative for the year. It just means we could be up 5% right now. The market could potentially drop, let's say, 10% in value and then recoup and go to new high ground before the end of the year. Expect some kind of variation or some kind of short-term correction, which I firmly believe will be a buying opportunity. So if you're, if you need immediate income, you want to make sure you have adequate cash reserves or short-term bond investments that you can sell and not at a loss. So too many investors sometimes have too much in risk assets when they need current income and then you're forced to sell an asset that is down when you need temporary income from your portfolio. Let's go to the phone lines and our email questions. Larry from Miami, Florida. Won't the dollar strength negatively impact earnings growth? Great unbiased show, thank you. Larry, great question. I talked about this earlier, yes. If the dollar keeps getting stronger, primarily, large cap stocks get hurt the most. So if you want a great opportunity to make a return on your portfolio, look at small and mid cap stocks, not only in the US, but some of the emerging markets. But let's talk specific US. Statistically speaking, again, no guarantee to the future, small caps and mid cap stocks have greatly outperformed over long periods of time, large cap stocks. With a dollar strength, and we're seeing more of that this year, large caps will probably underperform this year and small and mid cap stocks will probably outperform as we are currently already seeing. Of course, at our firm, I feel we're properly positioned in those small and mid cap areas that are gonna give our clients the opportunity with dollar strength to have the opportunity to perform or at above levels. Eric in Naples, Florida. Are bank loan funds a suitable money market replacement? No, let me explain what a bank loan fund is. Bank loan funds are floating rate bond funds that ba basically buy 90 day paper. Usually bank loans or the loans that have banks have put out. So they can have some volatility to them. If you're looking for money that's safe, you're looking to have a down payment on a house of 30,000, that goes in a money market. You're not gonna make any real return but you're also not gonna go down in value. If you're looking to actually make a return on your money and you wanna be a little bit more cautious and you want some on the bond side, I'm suggesting floating rate securities or bank loan type funds. These are great alternatives to traditional bonds because they're typically 90 day paper, which has very low volatility when interest rates go up. And as rates go up, you can correspondingly get 
a potentially higher yield on yield. Unlike a typical bond mutual fund where there, they might be an eight year average maturity, if rates go up a quarter point, you could lose one or 2%, maybe more of the bond value of your fund. So again, interest rates go up, bond values get, uh, go down, and bond values in general go down. Floating rate securities are the shortest maturity typically level of general bonds. Great opportunity in a low interest rate environment that has a potential for interest rates to slowly move up. Go to my website, resneywealth.com. Of course, if you're concerned about the advice you're receiving, maybe you're working with a broker. Maybe you're working with one of these annuity salespeople who took your money to the woodshed. Go to resneywealth.com, download any of our groundbreaking reports. How to avoid outliving your money during retirement. Why annuities are dangerous to your wealth and retirement. And download our number one report, your biggest investment risk, fiduciary versus suitability. Is your money being taken to the woodshed by your local bank representative, your brokerage firm, or your insurance agent? Chances are, if you're like 90% of Americans, you have a salesman, not a real investment manager, and that firm does not have to legally work in your best interest. Go to resneywealth.com, download any of our free reports, instant access, learn how to protect your money from Wall Street charlatans and annuity salespeople. Tom in Cape Coral, Florida. What is the role of bonds in a portfolio and do you believe the weight in bonds based upon age? I'm 65. Tom, great question. Typically the role of bonds in a portfolio is to add some layer of protection against the stock market. The problem is bonds gave that protection when rates were much higher. So do not expect the same level of protection having bonds in a portfolio of stocks. It's not gonna happen. Rates came down from 10, 12% over the last decade down to around 2% on the 10 year. You're not gonna get the same level of protection. I also do not believe the percentage weighting based upon your age in bonds. As an example, Theory says if you're 65, you should have 65% of your money in bonds. If you do that, you're gonna be a Walmart greeter in a couple years because you're gonna run out of retirement money. You can't survive on 2% interest on bonds, especially when inflation's running 2% plus and you have taxes. You need to have growth and income total return. Remember, if you're 65 years old, and you're married, there's a 90% chance that one of you will live in your 90s. You're talking about a 25-year retirement or longer. That's almost longer than most people have actually worked in their life. Your portfolio needs to grow to combat inflation. If you own bonds, look at the weighting. I personally believe right now, no more than 30% weighting in bonds, extremely short maturity, protect your money. Don't listen to the advice, overload the boat in bonds. And the big thing that I'm finding today is too many investors are chasing yield. They're buying weird offset bonds or mortgage REITs or other investments, closed end funds that look like they're paying these high rates of return when they're actually paying back your own capital. Or they'll listen to the annuity charlatans where they'll tell you, you're gonna make 8% money on your, on your annuity, you're not gonna make it. These are usually blatant lies or fabricated sales tactics. Watch out for annuities, they never give you free bonuses, they don't pay 8% returns, and watch out for any investment today that's paying above average yield over three to 4%. Suspect and could be deadly to your portfolio. I'm gonna take a short break, visit my website, resneywealth.com, Call my firm for a consultation. You'll be glad you did. I'll be right back after this. Hello, this is Brian Resney. If your goals are to increase your retirement income and retire without stress, go to my website and download our groundbreaking free report. This free report covers the investment and retirement pitfalls that are often overlooked even by the smartest investor. If you're concerned about outliving your money during retirement, or maybe you wanna make sure you're not leaving money on the table, this free report is for you. Know the facts, your retirement depends on it. 
Go to my website, ResneyWealth.com and download your free report right now. And we're back. If you have questions about your portfolio, send them to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. Better yet, visit my website, ResneyWealth.com. Schedule a consultation. I know you've been watching my show on TV. You've been listening to my live uh, radio show also. Call us. Schedule an appointment. There is a big difference in firms. We're not Wall Street. We don't sell annuities. We actually manage your money. And the best part of our firm, risk management, is an important part of how we manage your wealth. You work hard for your money, let us work harder to protect it. Call us for consultation. It does not hurt to talk and get a second opinion. Our number's at the bottom of the screen. And again, visit our website, resneywealth.com. Terry in Boca Raton, Florida. What do you think of all the negative bubble headlines you hear every day and what should an investor do? Terry, great question. There's all kinds of negative headlines. If you listen to the talking heads on CNBC that are always telling you to buy and sell and do all this kind of craziness, these are all Wall Street firms. They want you to do buying and selling all the time because it makes them more money. Negative headlines are worthless. There's also a lot of these propaganda, I call them newsletters, that go out all the time about how the government's going to take away your 401k plan and keep the money for themselves to pay the bills. Again, propaganda. Negativity and negative news sells. For some reason, investors love to listen to that stuff. Turn the TV off, generally speaking, when you hear these negative headlines. We at my firm use none of that negative headline news when we manage a client portfolio. We use real research that we look at every single day. We look at the facts, we look at the figures. We don't care about that somebody's talking uh, negative, negative, that we're gonna have a 50% correction because these people are always wrong. Bottom line, how's the economy doing? Is it growing? Are the assets you're invested in pr properly invested? Are they of value or are they overvalued? There's a lot of things we look at as a firm. You as an investor, turn off the negative news, positive news, Real facts are what's going to help drive the returns on your portfolio, and that ultimately is going to help you have a successful retirement. Todd in Naples, Florida. Are you concerned about equity valuations? Todd, no, I am not. If I look at equity valuations, again, in the U.S., there are some areas that are overvalued. I talked about a few of those earlier. Those would be some of the uh, traded REITs, real estate investment trusts, utility stocks, in my opinion, are overvalued. There are some areas in the biotech that are overvalued, but generally speaking, valuations of the S&P, some of the small and mid-cap areas are of fair value. Some are less than fair value and look for those pockets. If you go overseas, there's areas that are overvalued and there's areas that are undervalued. So in general, we don't see any real bubbles. It's not like 2000 where technology stocks were trading at 85 and 100 PE ratios price to earning. Generally speaking, the NASDAQ right now, which is mostly technology, like in 2000, is trading at around about a 17 PE ratio to this year's numbers. The S&P 500 trading at about a 17 PE ratio to this year's numbers. Back in 2000, the S&P was trading at about a 35 PE ratio. So valuations are not stretched. Earnings are growing. Revenues are growing. The economy is doing well and we're expanding. I like what we see, but there are pockets that are expensive that I would avoid that I mentioned earlier. Mark in Sanibel, Florida. Gabella Utility, G-A-U-C-X, pays a huge dividend. What do you think of that fund? Mark, I would avoid that fund. The fund's done decent, but again, just because something pays a big dividend doesn't mean you should buy it. I'm finding a lot of investors pick their investments based upon how big the dividend is or the distribution is. That fund's done okay. The expenses expense ratio is sky high. If I was going to look at utilities, which I am not, and I would avoid, and I would be a net seller of utilities, and I've said that since the beginning of 2015, I would look at something like the Spider 
XLU. It's an ETF that buys a basket of utilities. It's done quite well over the long term. It pays a good dividend. To me, it's not as overvalued or as expensive on an annual basis as that Gabelli fund, but I would avoid utilities right now. If you own utilities, I would seriously recommend you review each one of those and decide which ones are, are grossly overvalued and sell those. Or you can always call our office, schedule a consultation, sit down with us, let us do the heavy lifting, take a look at your portfolio and see if we can help you better manage it so you can better meet your income goals and your growth goals for your retirement. Sal from Naples, Florida. How can I generate income in a low yield world? I'm sitting on a lot of bonds paying 3% and cash paying zero. Sal, bottom line is don't invest all in bonds. You need to look at total returns. Sometimes you, your portfolio needs to grow and receive dividend, that's total return. Remember, if your portfolio grows 6% a year, you could always sell some of that growth off throughout the year to generate income. It doesn't have to just come from dividends. What I'm finding is a lot of investors maybe are a little old school. They look at, at strictly the dividend something pays, and if it's paying a low dividend, they assume that's the income they're gonna receive. I'd rather have total return. I'd rather have an investment that has an opportunity to grow 5%, has a 2% dividend for a potential total return of 7% than buying a bond that's paying 3% with no growth potential, but can actually go down in value if rates go up. Total return is important. Again, if you're concerned about your portfolio, call my office, schedule a consultation. We do have offices in Fort Myers and in Naples. And again, we'll put our number at the bottom of the screen. You can also visit our website, resneywealth.com. Check out and download any of our free reports like how to avoid outliving your money during retirement. We specifically talk about low interest rate environment and what investors can do about total return in order to better their portfolio and better their retirement. Dennis in Fort Myers, Florida. Why uh, small cap value over uh, small cap growth? There's not really one over the other. In fact, if I, somebody said to me, Brian, would you buy small cap value over small cap growth? I'd say no. I'd rather look at a blend. Take a look at the iShares IJR, which fair disclosure we currently own in our managed account. It's more of a combination of value and growth. What you're going to find, Dennis, is from time to time, value will outperform growth for a certain period of time, six months or a year. Then there'll be times where growth outperforms it for the next three years, and then value comes back. You don't know when those periods are necessarily going to be, so owning a blend or a more diversified index like the iShares IJR, to me, would be a better proposition. In fact, we like small cap a lot, and I like mid cap a lot. I think there's great opportunity. Remember, small cap in general often does better than large cap for a couple reasons. Small cap companies can grow earnings and revenues faster, which often pushes prices up faster, and they are often targets for buyouts. Large companies looking to grow will go after small and mid cap companies to buy. When a company is bought out, they often sell at a premium, meaning return, ching ching, for you, the investor. Do not disregard small and mid cap. In fact, in my opinion, if you have any equity uh, allocation in your portfolio, which you should, at least 30 to 60% of that should be between small and mid cap, and then some in large cap in addition. Small and mid cap are great drivers of growth, and I don't care if you're 50, you're 60, you're 70, you're 80, small cap and mid cap have, should be part of your portfolio for income and growth combination total return. Lori in Cape Coral, Florida. How do you pick a good advisor? I met three and all tried to sell me an annuity. Are you taking new clients? Lori, we are taking new clients. Again, visit our website and we'll put our number at the bottom of the screen. Bottom line is this, Lori, investors like you are confused what an advisor is. If you go to a Wall Street firm, they all call themselves an advisor or a wealth manager. These people are stockbrokers and salesmen with fancy titles of deception. You only want to hire a fee only registered investment advisor, not fee based. So if you're one of these people that are working with a Wall Street firm, 
you're being taken to the woodshed. You're working with either a fee-based or a commission-based salesperson who legally may not work for you. And I know that's a shocker to a lot of people, but at the end of the day, a fee-only fiduciary has a legal obligation to work for their clients and actually works for you in a money manager capacity. A stockbroker under commission works under suitability and legally he or she works for their firm and doesn't legally have to give you the best advice or really any quality advice. They're selling products their firms require them to sell and that they sponsor and manufacture. And remember, those people are compensated based upon what they sell. Higher commission, higher bonus driven products put more money in the broker or so-called advisor's pocket than yours. Best thing to do, go to my website, download our free report and questionnaire. It's your number one investment risk. It's at the bottom of the homepage. Fiduciary versus suitability. If you read that report and use that questionnaire, Lori, it'll tell you how to pick the right advisor, how to find out if you've got a, a Wall Street charlatan or an annuity charlatan taking your money to the woodshed. Every single week and month, we get dozens of calls into my office. People thought their Wall Street firm had to work in their best interest. They listen to one of my shows. They finally educate themselves by downloading that report and they can make better decisions. Go to resney.com, resneywealth.com, excuse me, download that report. You'll learn a ton and you'll protect your wealth. Sam from Fort Myers, Florida. Can strong corporate earnings spark a renewed rally in stocks? It certainly can. What happens is this, Sam, earnings often drive price of stock. The more money a company makes, the often the higher the stock price will go. If a company's not growing earnings or revenue, often the stock price will be flat or go down. You want to own companies or parts of the market that are actually growing earnings and revenue. That gives you the best opportunity to grow stock valuations. Don't own companies where earnings are going down. That is a falling knife or sword, as we call it, dangerous. Own companies or sectors of the market that earnings are growing, best opportunity really to grow your portfolio. Folks, I am just about out of time. As always, visit our website, go to resneywealth.com. That's resneywealth.com. We're gonna have our number at the bottom of the screen in a second here, so you can make sure you write down this number. But visit our website. If you're concerned about your portfolio, we know you work hard for your money. We're gonna work hard to protect it. Schedule a review, schedule a consultation. It doesn't hurt to talk and get a second opinion. We have offices in Naples and in Fort Myers. Call our office right now. Go to our website, resneywealth.com. Don't go it alone. You owe it to yourself to get a second opinion. We want to make sure you do it as best you can. And the best way to do that is a review. We'll see you next week.